Okay guys, I'm gonna make a quick video on the choke chain. This is also called the slip collar or chain collar. And it is a training tool that is not as popular anymore. It used to be very popular decades ago and even to this day in certain applications, uh, certain departments will still use choke chains. I know the military working dogs and the contract working dogs, I know this from experience, are still big on choke chains where prong collars are not widely accepted, they're not used, but they understand that they're working with these very powerful dogs, so they'll use a choke chain as a supplement to their flat collars. Now, choke chains in the average pet industry is not a huge thing anymore. This is something that, you know, don't see as much. You don't quite see it in pet, at pet stores. You do see them, but not quite, not a whole lot. Your average dog trainer is not telling you to get a choke chain. Uh, you're usually going to be dealing with either some sort of martingale style collar like the prong or the polymer uh, pinch collar or, you know, a slip collar, a nylon slip collar even. But the choke chain itself is not as popular as it used to be. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about this. The choke chain um, or the slip collar, the chain slip collar, it's easily misused, not so much because uh, you know the intention is to abuse or hurt the dog. But a lot of times what happens is if you buy one of these and you don't quite know how to use it, what ends up happening is the dog will just start pulling right into it and the dog is just pulling and pulling and pulling. If a dog, if you have a dog that is very sensitive, very frail, very small dog, this could potentially cause tracheal damage and a lot of damage to the area around the neck. Um, if you have a dog that is not very sensitive, then the other thing that you could cause is you could cause an increase in tolerance. Uh, you could actually toughen up the neck, not in a good way, but in a way that it would just won't serve you. So the dog will pull and pull, the dog will keep choking itself, it will create that constant damage to his trachea. And this is how your average person who buys a choke chain, who doesn't know how to use it, this is typically what it looks like and it's not meant to be used like this. It's a horrible way to use it. It is meant to give a, um, you know, a pinch if you, you, if you do use it properly, if you are going to use it as a pop and release. If you are gonna use it in escape conditioning or avoidance conditioning, um, the pressure can certainly help you, uh, but you have to understand that it's meant to be applied as a pop and release, and there is a small pinch that will happen where the ring meets the, the links. Okay, you could also use it for defensive handling if you're working with a dog that is fairly unpredictable, very dangerous, and it starts potentially opening its mouth at you, it starts potentially giving you the well eyes, you don't know the dog, it's a very powerful dog. This right here could certainly help you defensive handle yourself and, um, and that's about it, right? You can, yes, you can mold the dog into a sit, you can help the dog or mold the dog into a down and all those things with this. Uh, you're not adding that agitation that the prong collar can add to certain dogs, so it can help you then but you have the disadvantage that this is not gonna stay where you want it, right? You're gonna put this on your dog and it's gonna slide way down. It's gonna slide all the way to the base of their neck, uh, which is going to then turn it into a, uh, into a harness. It's gonna be right on top. That's gonna pull right against it. And even if you do the pop and release with the choke chain, it's just gonna be way down here. It's not gonna be effective. And it's just a tool that has a lot of those um, uh, cons about it. it's not the easiest tool to use it'll keep sliding and so if you do use it properly yeah it can be a great tool because it can be that tool that gives me enough intensity a little bit more than a flat collar would um, but maybe it's also good for my dog that is more sensitive where uh, even a polymer collar might be a little bit too much so it's a nice little transition onto that, um, but obviously you have to be very quick with this. You have to constantly adjust it up because it will always slide down. You're gonna have to adjust it up. It's just one of those things that you're gonna be 
you know, doing throughout the training. The standard suggestion for sizing it is a little bit off in my opinion. You know, one of the things that they'll tell you is if you do get a choke chain, if you use some kind of slip collar, the suggestion is, you know, measure the circumference of your dog's neck and add two inches to it. And to me, that's not good. Like if, if I measure the circumference of my dog's neck and add two inches, that could potentially be way too big, right? Uh, you have dogs that have different size skulls. Their heads are bigger than other dogs. Uh, the necks are gonna be very different. Some dogs' necks are about the same, um, but the same girth as their skull. Some dogs have massive skulls and very thin necks. Just, it's just not very effective to just go by the circumference of the neck and add two inches. What I like to do is I like to use a, you know, maybe some 550 cord or, uh, you know, some sort of a shoelace or something, some sort of line. And I will just kind of go around the measurement of my dog's head, right? His, I'll measure his skull at the widest possible point. So with that 550 cord, with that shoelace, I will measure it. So I will measure the widest part of their skull. And I'm going to use that as my measurement for the size of choke chain that I'm going to use. What, will, what you will get then is a choke chain that will easily go just past your dog's skull. And it will sit nicely once it goes past the skull on the neck. Right? Because if I measure the circumference of the dog's neck and at two inches, this collar is going to sit way down here. Um, but at the same time, I don't want it to be too tight. I don't want to have to squeeze that choke chain past my dog's ears. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the long, the widest part of the dog's skull, and I'm going to get a choke chain as close to that as possible. So again, the choke chain can just slide right past it, and it's much more likely to stay to stay up high when I put the leash on the live ring. So that's how I like to size it. And as far as using it, um, you know, it's just a pop and release. And occasionally, depending on the situation, especially if it's a potentially dangerous situation, then I might hold it for a little bit. But for the most part, it's going to be loose, some pop and release, and it just sits like a regular necklace. I don't want this to be uh, like this the entire time. It's not good for the dog. It's terrible for the dog. So if you don't know how to use it, definitely don't use one of these. Um, but if you are very comfortable using training collars like prong collars, polymer collars, slip collars, or slip leashes, that, that is, then the choke chain can be a nice transition between a nylon slip leash and a prong collar.